Luka Doncic finally has some real help in Dallas, but the biggest question is will this new superstar duo fit well together? The Brooklyn bromance is done and it left us more questions than answers. KD and Kyrie managed to play only 36% of games in three seasons, and just as they seem to have figured it out, Kyrie demanded a trade. Mark Cuban and the Mavericks are gambling big time, but it might just be exactly what they needed. Before we analyze the situation, don't forget to like this video if you agree that Kyrie is exactly the type of help Luca needed. Send off, jumper. First, let's talk about the offensive side of the floor, where these two together with shooters around could potentially be quite unstoppable. Especially in the playoffs, where we already saw Doncic adding another gear to his game. He was orchestrating almost every possession while on the court with his usage rate at an insane 40%. Jalen Brunson was a significant side piece making a name for himself and earning a solid contract from the New York Knicks. Now, as weird as it may sound for someone, but Kyrie is coming to take this second ball handler place. What a luxury and a nice problem to have if you are Jason Kidd. Some could even say Kyrie is the best second ball handler of all time, having played next to LeBron, KD and now Luka throughout his career. That's exactly why I don't buy the argument he will have problems adjusting on offense. He has had lower usage rates both in a championship winning season in Cleveland and this year in Brooklyn, where they seem to have found the perfect rhythm in December, winning 12 games out of 13 and having the best best offensive rating in the NBA. Durant against Collins. Pull up jump. Nylon. Kevin Durant takeover. However, it is true that in both cases it was more of a your turn, my turn type of offense. The difference in usage rates wasn't that big and Irving got a lot of chances to show his ISO skills in semi-transition or simply on his favorite right block. Yet, Luka's usage rate in Dallas is at an insane 40% rate. And that's why I believe it will be Luka who, for the first time in his career, will have to adjust his game a bit. We have not seen much of Luka playing off the ball and it is definitely a question mark heading into this chapter. On the other hand, Kyrie playing off the ball is a huge upgrade for the Mavs in the place of Brunson and Dinwiddie. Even though he is struggling a bit by his standards with the catch and shoot freeze this season, 38% on these attempts is still a solid rate. The big thing is that the help defenders who are on Kyrie to start the possession are often confused whether and when they should go help. And with huge spaces to cover on an NBA court, that millisecond is usually enough for teammates to score at the rim. The wild the part of this scenario is that Luca is practically unguardable without the help. Return to the floor for Luca, who missed one full game and about 95% of another one, and he's on the board tonight. He is probably the most complete offensive player in the current NBA. A pick and roll master, an ISO killer, a post up threat, has the footwork in the paint, can draw fouls, and has incredible vision. He's so good that doubling him has become a routine practice in this year's NBA regular season. Teams prefer defending three against four than letting Luka isolate or play pick and roll. Open shots were a usual sight for the likes of Finney Smith, Dinwiddie, or Reggie Bullock. The problem sometimes was their finishing. I believe Dallas are trying to get one more shooter before the trade deadline, but even if they don't, try adding only Irving to this picture. He already does not have problems beating his defenders one-on-one, -on -one, so how do you stop a guy in a closeout situation where he's both an excellent shooter and also a superb finisher at the rim? There isn't a layup we haven't seen Kyrie make in his career and the variety of different layups, body control and excellent footwork allows him to be in the top 3 paint guard finishers in the league. Oh, and just look who is at number 2. Paint is the place where every coach wants to see his players arrive as much as possible and the Dallas Mavericks should not have problems doing that. Irving, the handles, Irving gets it to go and a foul! He is a sorcerer! They already have 8th offensive rating in the NBA, but with Kyrie there, they have potential to be the most hard to guard team on that side of the court come playoff time. Figuring things out will likely take some time because of the above mentioned things, but there are some offensive situations that I really don't know how teams are going to try and stop. For example, Kyrie setting a ball screen to Luka with Christian Wood and two other shooters waiting in the corners. 
If you blitz or hedge, that's Kyrie popping to attack with the advantage. If you switch, Luka gets a smaller defender on him, who he can take to the post or simply drive and finish using his body strength. Well, good thing I'm not the one who will have to figure something out, but even the Clippers coach Tyron Lue wasn't particularly happy when asked about the new superstar duo in Dallas. He said it's gonna be a tough challenge for a lot of teams in the West. Now, for a lot of people, finding a financial broker to trust is a huge challenge. This is where the sponsor of this video could help. Ardu Prime is a financial broker allowing customers to trade Forex and CFDs. They were founded in Greece in 1999 and are fully regulated. This year, Ardu Prime has become the premium partner of EuroLeague and my advice would be to follow them on Instagram right now because they are losing tickets to different EuroLeague games every week. Go visit arduprime.com to find more information about everything. Now, going back to the video, as good as their offensive potential potential may sound, Dallas had to give up their best wing defender in Dorian Finney-Smith to get Kyrie. And even though Kyrie is a better defender than most people think, he doesn't like energy, can stay in front of guards, and has very active hands, it's nowhere near what DFS brought to Dallas every night. By losing him, their potential best lineup got smaller and that will surely harm their ability to cover the gaps and close out situations. We already saw Luka get exposed defensively in the playoffs last year, with Bullock and Finney Finney Smith trying to do damage control, but bringing in Kyrie gives another target for every opposing coach. We all know it's all about the matchups in May and June, and with many teams going positionless with four forwards in each lineup, a skinny guard could be the weak link. Isolation, beautiful move, Murray with the finish. In Brooklyn, Kyrie did not have to defend that much this year simply because of the switch-all system they have in post, which actually worked wonders for them. Every time he was involved, the Nets triple switched him out of the picture, leaving him covering the man in the corner with Nick Laxon doing the majority of the work on the perimeter. Plus, the NBA going away from the post-ups helped a lot. No one is looking to attack the mismatch inside anymore, which gave Brooklyn extra time to get Kyrie away from the danger. Dallas are also often using this switching tactic, but with Luka and Kyrie in the same lineup, one of them will definitely have to step up and defend at an above average level if they want to succeed. Last but not least, we cannot underestimate the constant chaos surrounding Kyrie all the time. Even though multiple teammates have repeatedly mentioned how great Irving is as a person, he has already forced his way out of multiple teams, with numerous scandals leading up to that. Lucas seems like an easiest guy to get along well with, and their connection off the court will be just as important in defying Dallas's success as their abilities on the court. Sixth in the West, that is obviously his. Irving drives inside, shot is good! Oh, spectacular move there from Kyrie Irving, it's back. To sum up, Dallas made a huge gamble with this trade, letting Brunson go, trading away Finney Smith, Dinwiddie, the future first round pick for a half year of Kyrie is a pretty big price. Maybe that's an even bigger gamble than Masai Ujiri renting Kawhi Leonard for one year in Toronto. Yes, if Kyrie is happy to stay in Dallas with a two-year contract in the summer, then it's fine. But wanting a full four-year contract extension is presumably the main reason why he wanted to get out of Brooklyn. However, Ujiri's risk in Toronto resulted in championships, so could the same happen in Dallas as well? The way I see it, it's either going really good or really bad. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you in the next one.